that. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for coming along and thank you for joining us. Um, firstly, we're here to, um, to really support the industry. That's why One Stop Warehouse has started these seminars, was to support the industry to give um, some technical skills about um, from our solar suppliers and also some marketing skills and hopefully just have a chance to network as well. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, firstly, let me just thank our partners, um, Huawei, FEMA, SunGrow and Longy Solar are our platinum partners and then we have a host of gold partners there that have been very supportive and very supportive of what we're doing. Um, let's also thank our five speakers. We've got an amazing lineup of people here today, um, starting with... Um, pardon? Starting with Carol Lambert, who is a psychology and business um, teacher. She teaches um, psychology and how to how to get the consumer to connect with your story and your business. Um, we've got Jason Venning from FEMA, who's our platinum sponsor, and he'll be speaking today. Rich Latimer, who is from Rich um, Rich Training digital and he'll be teaching us he's a digital marketing expert in the solar industry dean williamson from goodwe and sid shaheed from discover energy um, they'll all be teaching us and helping us along today so firstly um cara are you there i am indeed tim thanks for having me hi on. cara welcome um so Cara, do you want to give us a quick second summary of what you're going to be sharing with us today. So what I'm sharing is the three big problems that business owners come to me when it comes to getting onto Facebook and how psychology and understanding psychology will fix that. So some great takeaways, quick wins. Fantastic. Um, Rich, I might just bring you in to say hello. And is Rich in? I don't She's believe not connected he yet. is. Okay. Um, Jason, are you available to say hello? I think yes, you're I doing our am. first address. Yes, um, welcome, very much. sir. Um, yes. You're going to be giving us our first address today. And um, what what is going to be your primary focus? Um, well, we're going to be talking. I'm going to be talking a bit about uh, who is FEMA because obviously that's not a name that's necessarily familiar to everyone out there going to be talking about how uh, we're going as a business and our people through COVID-19. Talk a bit about some marketing perspectives uh, that, that we've come up with uh, and uh, our view of how you might be able to better connect with um, the market based on some things that we've done. And last but not least, just a quick overview of uh, what we uh, have to offer to uh, solar customers in Fantastic. the market. Um, our gold partner, Goodwe, um, is being represented by Dean Williamson. Um, Dean, do you want to jump in and say hello to us? Yeah, hi, Tim. Um, I will be talking a bit today about uh, Goodwe, who we are as a global organisation, um, our AU infrastructure, also how we've been affected uh, by COVID-19, um, the potential impact that's had on manufacturing capacity, and also uh, lastly, what we're doing effectively to help our customers throughout this difficult time as well. Fantastic. And last but not least, we've got Sid Shaheed from Discover Energy. Want to say hello to us, Sid? And he's having technical problems too, so we'll move on. Um, one of the great things... Oh, welcome, sir. Hang on. Oh, sorry. I was on a mute. That's so, right. Uh, You're on. Very quickly, uh, we'll be discussing how to uh, add a, a revenue stream for a solar business um, at this difficult time and partnering with Discover Energy as a channel partner uh, could help a business uh, create more revenue stream. Fantastic, Sid. Thank you for that. Okay. Um, thanks to all our sponsors um, or all our partners, um, we've been raising money to support uh, a number of hospitals uh, from every state. Um, so we're going to be making um, a large donation at the end of this series, um, thanks to the support of all the partners who've been helping us. So 
Um, again, thank you for that because clearly um, my, my wife is a nurse. Um, she's in the emergency department, so she's on the front line of, um, of this um, epidemic. So, yeah, I, I'm very grateful that uh, we'll be able to help um, hospitals out across our country um, who are all dealing with that. Um, it's my great pleasure to bring back um, Jason Venning, the country manager of FEMA Australia, um, for his presentation. So, Jason, please feel free to jump in and uh, steal the screen and do what you need to do. Thanks very much, Tim. Um, so let me just get the technology working here so I can share my screen. Okay, how's that looking, everyone? It's looking great. Okay, fantastic. So let me just start uh, briefly to talk about who is FEMA, um, because obviously uh, I understand for some of you that's not a name you can be familiar with. So in essence, FEMA um, is a company that's been around uh, since 1942 and has been uh, active in inverter technology uh, and solar in the last 10 to 20 years. And the major thing that's happened recently is that uh, FEMA has purchased the ABB solar inverter business at a global level. So that was completed in the first quarter of 2020. So that's still a very new um, thing that's happened. And uh, what that has allowed FEMA to do is to really get a genuine global footprint and a product portfolio that encompasses residential, commercial and utility solar. So FEMA itself as a company has been around for quite a long time and has gone through uh, evolution in its product portfolio. Started out in, uh, in welding and then moved into inverted technology uh, back in the 80s and really got into solar around 2007, which is when a lot of companies uh, really jumped on board with the solar market. Then expanded uh, globally um, from, the, uh, from the Italian base. Uh, also now we're into uh, EV charging products. And then, uh, as I just mentioned, 2020 was by far the biggest change to FEMA where uh, they've now taken over the uh, ABB solar business and uh, ready to take it under the, to the next level. So you'll continue to see um, our solar products branded as ABB for the time being, because we do have a trademark license agreement with ABB to use the logo. But over time, new products come into the market with the FEMA brand, but uh, we are now manufacturing all of those products uh, in our own right as the owners of uh, those particular products and the technology. So just to summarise, um, we've now grown to over 1,100 employees globally with the acquisition. Uh, truly a global footprint, 20 countries. 90% of uh, our business now is solar. So whereas in ABB, solar was just one of many businesses. With FEMA, solar is truly the core business. So we are going to give that uh, maximum focus to make sure we can look after our customers and provide them with uh, the leading products that they're expecting in the market. We've got a number of production sites around the world, two in Italy, one in India, and uh, R&D facilities as well. And you can see that we have significant production capacity and uh, installed base around the world, uh, including the uh, existing ABB uh, installed base. So what we're looking to do is to provide a complete solution for our customers and uh, really just help to accelerate and be a major player in the transition to renewable energy at a global level. And we've certainly got the capacity to do that. And the idea for us is to grow from take what we've got from the acquisition and uh, really become uh, one of the preeminent uh, in the solar industry globally. E-mobility is also something that uh, is in our portfolio. This is uh, something that I'm uh, hoping to bring to the Australian market uh, in the not future. But uh, we also see a strong trend towards e-mobility, use of electric vehicles. In Australia, of course, it's early days, but the potential is there. And uh, you know the movement started at a global level. So we'd love to be able to get in at the start and uh, again, really make an impact there and uh, 
help to uh, utilise the renewable energy uh, to power electric vehicles and uh, remove uh, a lot of the pollution and emissions that we currently have in the commercial and uh, residential uh, fleets around the country. So in Australia in particular, I lead a team of 25 people. Uh, we, uh, sales and marketing is uh, one of our primary focuses. We also have a repair centre for inverters in Sydney and tech support and logistics uh, support for warranty and spare parts. So I've got people in Melbourne, Sydney and Brisbane. So uh, ADB now going into FEMA, we remain committed to the Australian market. So we're here to stay as FEMA and uh, we're happy to uh, take the opportunity to um, get the message out to, uh, to the market about who we are. So a few things to highlight for those of you who would have been existing ADB customers. So all warranties and uh, agreements that we currently have from the ABB days are going to be fully honoured by FEMA. Still have our 10 year full replacement warranty on our UNO DM single phase range. That's going to become, that's now a permanent addition to the portfolio. As I talked about earlier, we'll be carrying the ABB logo for the time being on existing products, but you'll see a FEMA endorsement label uh, on those products uh, manufactured after March. And last but not least, we'll be looking to launch some new programs targeted at not only our channels, but also our end users and our um, service partners and installers. So we really want to do some exciting things. I'm very much looking forward to uh, working with all of you and uh, whether you're an existing customer or not uh, in the future, because uh, despite what's happening at the moment with COVID-19, the trend towards renewable energy is not going to stop. So uh, we really want to make sure that uh, we're here for the long, time, long term. Now COVID-19, of course, we all know it's had a dramatic impact, some countries more so than others. Uh, it just happens that our core inverter manufacturing for stream inverters is in Italy. And obviously, I know that's one of the countries that's been impacted very significantly. Uh, some really tragic um, facts and figures coming out of, uh, out of there. I am pleased to say that in terms of the FEMA family, uh, we have not had um, any significant impacts from that, which is great at a personal level. And also from a uh, business point of view, uh, we have been declared an essential service by the Italian government. So we've been able to continue to manufacture during this particular point in time, uh, although at a slightly reduced capacity. So the good news is, we can continue to provide products to, uh, to customers in Australia and around the world. So we've made sure we're looking after our team locally as well. We've implemented remote working where possible. Uh, really, it's just our warranty uh, team that's still uh, diligently working away in the repair centre, but they are observing all the uh, right precautions around social distancing and hygiene to make sure they're safe and their families are safe and our customers are safe. So I've just had to put a temporary hold on service works uh, due to travel restrictions put in place by our company and, and complying with government guidelines. So we're still able to provide warranty replacements and uh, swaps for our products. So if you do have a problem with a um, ABB FEMA inverter during this time, you can definitely still get a replacement. Um, just we won't personally be sending any of our team members out to do any swaps at this time for, for obvious reasons. But rest assured, we're still here to look after you and support you during these challenging times. And we certainly hope that everyone out there is getting through it uh, as best they can. So I just wanted to um, uh, come to the marketing things, which is obviously one of the main topics of uh, today's webinar. So last year as ABB, we were looking to develop a humour package, which basically put together a hybrid inverter, battery storage, plus EV charging with home automation and market that as a package. Now, whilst obviously due to the acquisition, we're not going to proceed with that exact package in the same way, um, we did do a lot of market research and get some really interesting insights. Because one of the questions that we came up with ourselves is how do we know what people out there want, what's driving them, what are the behaviours, how do we connect with them on the different levels, be it emotional, financial, uh, what are the drivers behind people buying decisions? So just wanted to share with you
some of the uh, insights that we came up with, uh, which hopefully will be of some interest So what we did is we engaged Roy Morgan to do some research for us. And this is what we came back with, excuse me. <clears throat> Sorry about that. In terms of a sample profile of the different types of people that we surveyed. So we did something around all of Australia and you can see there the different types of um, people and demographics, um, educational status, for example, of the um, sample that uh, responded to the uh, research questionnaire. And from that, we identified six groups of people that we thought would be a good audience for this package. So, I mean, the message here is that in, in these times and coming out of this whole COVID-19 um, epidemic, obviously the, the economic damage is going to be significant and the amount of people who are perhaps ready to go and invest a lot of money in solar, battery storage, what have you, is going to be less than it was beforehand. Um, now's the time to really think, okay, how can I target my efforts and my marketing dollars to ensure I get the best return on my investment, particularly since just you know trying to catch everyone uh, in a very broad perspective uh, possibly isn't going to work at this point in time and coming out of this because not everyone will be in the market to buy anymore. So you've got to think, okay, who should I be targeting now? And you can see on this slide some information about what we found from the the six groups and. You know, how they would go about doing things, buying decisions, so forth, why they would go ahead and buy a solar battery system. So useful information there. And out of that, we came up a couple of, uh, let's call them groups. Out of these, I'll just highlight a couple. And you can see there, we really drilled down into who are these people, where do they live, what are their drivers, what do they care about? So it's not just a dollars and cents perspective. Definitely, you know, trying to connect to people on an emotional level who want to do the right thing by the environment, leave a legacy for their children, grandchildren, all those sorts of non-financial drivers. So these are sorts of things that uh, it'd be good to take into account. Because certainly, it'll potentially be a group like higher income people who may or may not be as uh, impacted economically from the uh, lockdowns we've had in Australia, who on the other side um, would may still be a, a good target for um, a solar package, for example. So we, you can see on the slide here, we fleshed out um, the groups and broke them out into a couple of personas. Here's one example, let's call them professionals. So we went into quite a bit of a deep dive about what they're expecting, you know, what are they worried about, what are their challenges, goals, who do they trust to get information? What questions might they have? So these are the sorts of uh, this is the sort of information that we think could be very useful to help to uh, direct your messaging and your marketing in the right area in the current environment and in the coming months. The other one on the other side, you've got let's say uh, something that might represent the average Australian. So, you know, they're very much uh, home bodies, very proud of their home uh, and, you know, they like to be able to um, invest in home and, um, you know, show people that, um, you know, they've got a nice place to live. Um, they're always looking for new projects, uh, improving things. So, again, another um, demographic or persona that uh, is uh, uh, worth looking at. And then again, the same sort of analysis for that group looking at uh, what are their drivers, et cetera, where do they get their information from? So you can better uh, target the right people to, uh, to drive results. So from that group, you've got the home improvers. So you know, one of the things that says a lot to me is that one of the uh, essential services that are still open is Bunning. So as we know, Australians be perennial DIY people and home improvers. So I'm sure that will continue. Um, so they're another potential target that uh, you know, we looked at uh, who would be uh, in, attracted in uh, you know, improving their home and, and adding extra features like solar and potentially batteries. And similar to you know, domestically, it's just another example of a, of a potential persona there 
uh, and uh, someone that might be uh, good to target and still able to um, afford to invest in a solar system uh, in the coming months. So just wanted to sort of share those insights with you. Obviously uh, quite a bit of information there, but you know, this will be available for you to go over with the recording. So I uh, um, hope you find some of that useful. Just wanted to give you a very high level view. Um, so in the last part of uh, my uh, presentation, I just wanted to take you through our portfolio. So as I said earlier, we are now across all the different um, segments in the industry, uh, particularly after the acquisition of ABB Solar. So you can see residential, so that we've got product range uh, up to the 10 kilowatt uh, sort of size, typical size, commercial, industrial, 10 to 5 megawatts, utility generally above five, and also in the microgrid space, we do have uh, products there which are typically suited to places that don't have a grid connection at all. Uh, but look, uh, that's interesting um, area as well, developing interest there, particularly in states like Western Australia with a lot of remote communities that don't have a connection to the grid or use ex expensive diesel power. So that's a growing market that we're very interested in tapping into. So on the residential side, uh, we have our UNO DM range, which is the single phase inverter range. So uh, the latest one is the uh, Q model, as we call it. And one of the things that we're doing now uh, as FEMA is we're starting to release a version of that with an inbuilt DC switch, which may not sound like a very exciting development, but we have been uh, somewhat hamstrung by the fact that we didn't have a compliant DC in our single phase range, but now we do. So uh, uh, we're hoping that they give people another reason to consider us as a, as a brand to choose for solar because they don't have to worry about the expense and time of installing uh, an inter external DC isolator. And on the right hand side, our React 2, which is our hybrid solar and battery storage system. Uh, so this is a product that uh, we see has got a lot of potential. We've got the SA battery scheme, MT have also just launching their own battery scheme. So this product is now registered for the SA battery scheme. So uh, it is eligible for the subsidy, uh, even though that's been reduced, it is still a good amount of money there. So I encourage all of you um, to have a look at the home storage market because with the subsidies that are in place and the current environment, I think people are probably looking for more security um, for their power usage, whether so that's you know really a an objective thing or really just a subjective emotional response doesn't really matter, but uh, you know, security is important. So that's something that's certainly worth appealing to with prospective customers, I would say. So storage gives you that, um, that security, even if you're not totally off grid. Uh, commercial and industrial range. So we're going to come out with some uh, newer products in the second half of the year, which sort of fill that gap in the 10 to 30 kilowatt three phase, but for the time being, we have our 50 kilowatt and our 100 kilowatt. So um, some good quality products there, very compact, high power, um, easy to install, uh, some great features there. So we've got quite a large install base of the PBS 100 in Australia now, and the PBS 50 is taking off as the replacement for our old trio, if people are familiar with that. So some good products there, app-based commissioning, remote monitoring, so all the, the new features that uh, are expected in the current marketplace. Last but not least in the utility side, our PVS175 is our high power string inverter, 1500 volt DC. That again, we're starting to get a couple of uh, sites installed in uh, Australia and you'll see quite a few more in the course of the year. We've got a number of projects that are currently under delivery. So that's a good product, again, based on the same platform as the PBS100. And PBS980 is our central inverter product. Uh, it says up to 2.3 MBA there, but actually we now have a, a version that does up to 4.6 MBA in a single pack block. So um, we also, you also expect to see though that particular product in some central inverter utility scale projects during the course of the year. So last but not least, we are here to support you um, through these difficult times and also come beyond. 
So we do currently have a um, promotion running where if you uh, fill out a survey um, ask, where we ask you some questions about your business and and uh, the market that you operate in. If you get in before midnight tonight, you can go into the draw to win one of five vouchers to use as a FEMA distributor. And One Stop Warehouse uh, has always been a strong supporter of ABB and now FEMA. So you can absolutely use that uh, with any purchases of FEMA products from One Stop Warehouse uh, between now and the end of the year. So the links for that will be in the chat window. Um, if you want to access those. We'll announce the winners next week. So uh, no excuse not to miss out on uh, $250, nothing to be sneezed at there. Uh, also, for those of you who are current ABB stockers or um, retailers, we do have um, a, a site where you can go and get our new logo, product images, data sheets, etc., that have all been rebranded. So please encourage you to go and uh, get that information and the link again will be in the chat window. And uh, what we want to do is just have better regular communication with our customers. We want to let you know what's going on, what we're doing during COVID-19 and obviously beyond. Uh, so please encourage you to sign up to our newsletter and also follow us on uh, Facebook and LinkedIn so we can keep you up to date with the latest of what's going on with us. So last of all, we just want to um, uh, thank you for your support for those who are current customers. We look forward to continuing to work with you and welcome any new customers and um, whatever support we can provide to you during these times, that's what we're here for. And uh, as it says there, you can definitely count on us. So um, thanks to One Stop Warehouse for the opportunity to present and I hope you enjoy the rest of the uh, presentations. Um, thank you. Thank you very much, Jason, for sharing that. Um, I really appreciated you giving us um, insight into that marketing information. That was, um, I felt like we were getting a peek behind the curtain there. So that was, that was very generous of you. So thank you for that. No problem, Tim. Um, okay. Thank you. I'll um, pass on to our next speaker, um, who is Rich Latimer from Rich Training um, Digital. Um, Rich is a turnkey strategist and he targets specifically the solar industry. So he should be able to give you some um, great marketing insights. Before I bring Rich on though, I'm just gonna talk about beer o'clock. So what we're gonna be doing after the event is just opening up the room for people who wanna just try out their Zoom and have a chance to experiment and have a chance to, to, to maybe network a little bit um, with, with the group. So it's gonna be a bit of an experiment. We're gonna turn the recording off, but uh, it might be a great opportunity. If you haven't done live streaming before, if you haven't been in this Zoom space before, it'll just be a chance for, for people to have a go. Um, there's a few people who know what they're doing, who've done it before, who might be able to help you along. So that'll be beer o'clock, that'll be at the end of the event, but uh, if, you, if you're keen to have, a, have a, a chance, it'd be a great chance for, I guess, all of us to network as a community. So that's beer o'clock. So, let me switch that off. Um, Rick, Rich, sorry, I should say, Rich, would you like to uh, jump in and uh, share your talk with us? Sure, sure. Tim, how are you? How, hello, everyone. Hope you're all well. Jason, thanks for that. Some good insight uh, and information. And glad to hear that you and your team and, and essentially, I guess, in a way, the production line there and, and things, that's, that's great info. Um, so in brief, yeah, I think Tim covered it. Um, I'm, uh, uh, I'm actually a musician myself by my, my personal trade, um, which is where I cut my teeth in digital marketing. Um, but I've been marketing solar builders and trades companies for nearly 20 years. Um, and just in those areas and in the last four years I think it's pretty much now constitutes the majority of the work we do and it's been an amazing um, adventure to, to do that I also own and operate a completely virtual solar company that operates in America um, and um, 
and what they're doing there and how that's operating is is um, incredible and revolutionary. So, um, but today I want to sort of focus on something uh, probably in terms. So we we do everything. We do everything. We design all the marketing strategies, build websites, run social media, the whole thing, ads, lead generation as a as a single unit. The reason we do that is because. Um, and probably the most overlooked thing and the thing that I'd like to help you guys with today to take really seriously is that the actual marketing strategy, particularly the messaging, branding, positioning, you know, primary, secondary and tertiary kind of niche areas, that is the number one flaw that we find when we're with all of our clients, essentially. It's the number one thing that um, is inhibiting their growth. And right now, um, it's the thing, it, it basically is, um, it seems to be the difference between a company essentially just, you know, almost sort of winding down, shut, shutting down and those that are continuing. So what do I mean by that? I simply mean that um, uh, getting, getting very, very clear about what your company's messaging is, what your superpowers, how do you do that? How do you engage with your particular market base? Even if you don't actually know that or do that, developing that, it's actually where we start when we work with people is, is it's in, in micro detail. That affects everything. Um, and I'll do a bit of a case study in a moment to kind of give you a, you know, a, a real world uh, representation of what it means to go from kind of not much of a strategy in terms of marketing, um, just kind of uh, could be engaging some call centers or, you know, which, are, which is obviously difficult now and or door knockers or just buying random leads, resold solar leads. So those tend to be the traditional strategies and then some random digital marketing might be happening. What we found is, is as soon as you actually get clear about your messaging, clear about your market, understand how to move that messaging and then you utilize the power of Facebook, Instagram, Google, email automation, artificial intelligence, website generation, SEO, SEO. Once you get that part right, those things explode uh, kind of exponentially. And right now, for example, um, our clients are getting the highest quality, lowest cost leads and inquiry that we've ever seen in the history of marketing for solar businesses. So the other thing I want to do is give you some motivation that it's kind of going to, it's okay. It looks like it's not um, in terms of the shutdown and concerns about supply, but I can assure you and I can show you in, right now, um, uh, it's actually an incredible opportunity to reach consumers who are now slowing down their lives, thinking about their homes, thinking about, things like the future, how am I going to manage costs in the future? How am I going to deal with this situation economically? You've got businesses as well, small and medium businesses that are sort of, you know, wanting to um, think about this, a similar, a similar thing. So if you can actually get messaging out there in a way that meets people where they're at and you, you shift that. So um, obviously right now we're putting out messaging and I'll show you some examples that is, calming the client base down. It's kind of, you know, assuring them about the safe work practices, you know, assuring them uh, about how the integrity of the installers and, and, um, and the repetitive messaging uh, is what builds trust. So for example, we'll ha if you've got um, a consistent message of who you are, what you do, why you do it and, and what's your, what makes you special. So, and it varies. Um, uh, I'll start a bit of a case study, but I want to really make that point. And right now, I'm not sure, but if, if right now you happen to be a bit slower or inquiry appears slower, I encourage you, go back to the drawing board, sit down and actually really think about your business. Really think about um, what is the message we want to put out there, exactly what marketplaces. Instead of thinking just like we do residential and we pay this much money for leads, we win some, we lose some, and we just shotgun approach. Uh, if you were to take uh, take some time and, and work through a proper strategy, um, the impacts of that, the three main impacts are, one, you will have long-term security in your marketplace. So, for example, um, uh, if you build a brand presence and a name through consistent messaging, 
then when times get slow and tough, your name still exists in the marketplace. If you don't really have a brand presence or an existence in the marketplace, you are just a, a, a service provider really, that, that's more difficult. So, um, and when market demand drops, people go for, particularly now, particularly now, they seem to go for trust and, um, you know, even if it's the appearance of trust, you know, even if, if they're going to your Facebook page and they're seeing, you know, um, they're seeing amazing information coming out from you uh, in and around your response uh, to COVID, in, um, if you've got regular and consistent information, high quality information, um, and you're meeting the consumer base, your consumer base, not just any, then the results of this um, is, is a long-term security for your business. So what does that look like? Well, if I dive in, so I'm doing a bit of a case study on, on, on someone that we work with. And today I want to, there's so much to talk about within digital. Like we can, we can talk about, you know, the websites and how they need to be written and developed, you know, to specifically convert. We can talk about, you know, ad generation models. And there's just such an amount of wealth of information. But I think for you guys to actually come off this and go, right, Rich has given me some inspiration, some motivation to sit down. I'd be coming back to something uh, along the lines of this, the good old word doc. And I'd be sitting down, ideally, you know, with a, with a marketing expert um, and going through everything from scratch to reposition yourself right now, where you want to be, how you want to get there, what's your new product, you know. So, for example, clients of ours are pivoting. So, some of our clients are experiencing some delays in some of their materials. So, what have they done? They've turned around and said, well, what have we got access to? what products are in abundance still. And all of a sudden they're putting out messaging about inverter upgrades, for example, and the benefits in, of inverter upgrades. And all of a sudden there's cash flow and inquiry coming in and there's, you know, there's leads and digital inquiry coming into their, into their lead sheets and things um, that is responding to that messaging. So, um, that that's the biggest thing to do. And, and how would you do, how would you do that? You would sit down and you'd work through, you get your main overview, look at your core messaging. You would break down your, how are you going to approach your outbound messaging, particularly now with social media. So you're all aware that people are glued to their phones right now. Okay. So we've had, you know, probably a, a 40% increase in social media usage. So w what's your, what's your strategy around how you're messaging out, out, out to the people? Um, you know, so these guys are going with educational first, which is positioned for their long-term journey because ultimately they're going to also release online courses and information. They're going to, they're going to be releasing education material seminars. So a long-term strategy for this client with them is they're going to end up holding energy seminars, which are going to obviously result in getting 50 domestic house builds but it's a long-term strategy. It's going to take us 12 months or so of consistent social media, excellent advertising, um, email follow-ups, all, all obviously all, um, all automated and all, all um, driven, but they're all driven to the strategy. Um, and it's the number one flaw in 15 years of marketing, builders, trades and solar that I see. No clear strategy, no defined uh, primary, secondary and tertiary niche. No long-term growth, product diversification, and secondary, you know, secondary and third cash cash flow um, strategies, and then no messaging, or potentially, no, and then obviously the front end, actual technology. So the brilliant website, the amazing social media, the the, the advertising campaigns, and all the rest of it that comes down the line. So, but back at the beginning, it's this. You need to get mission statements around how you're doing it. You need to decide on your primary con um, content streams. You need to look at your, your main customer avatars. Usually two is enough. Um, you need to get your core directives and you need to be really true to yourself. So for example, we have a new client coming on next week and in his personality, his actual real personality, he's very, very particular about precision, precision, on time, you know, to the minute, everything done to precision. And he uses particular, it's just his nature. And so we're able to weave that into his strategy where the consumer base 
who are receiving his advertising, who are receiving his emails and, and watching his social media posts, they're being communicated this concept. This company is extremely passionate about precision, high quality, um, guaranteed work, multiple return visits to site if required. Um, and that is the truth. It's not just a, something we make up to, to, to market him. It's, like, it's actually the reality. Other people, so for, for this client that we're working with, his passion is broad. Being able to do mass, mass amounts of installs, meet multiple marketplaces. He's on a, we call it an area domination strategy. So in other words, to be the biggest name in a given area and mop up as much of the work as possible and has, you know, it has teams to do it. Um, and then, and then you've got your emotional. So that I'm talking, when I'm talking these strategies, these are the things you need to start thinking about, you know, and it goes right down through your SEO and your tag analysis, of course, and, you know, your own personal connection to your, your business. Then you've got to think emotionally. Um, and I think, I think, uh, I think Cara, uh, when I did the pre-call before this came up a little bit, we tend to think um, emotionally about how you, the, the customers are feeling emotionally. So that comes across then in how you're doing the visual identities based upon their demographics, their, um, you know, their emotional response to seeing a business online. Okay. Because unfortunately through the excessive use of call centers, through the excessive use of just buying what we call regurgitated leads, so lead, buying leads from one of the, the, the you know, fast buck leads, you know, $5 solar leads, it's hurt the industry because you have homeowners who are being berated. It's like, well, I've already spoken to three companies and I, I actually have a quote and I know some of you are experiencing that. And um, unfortunately, what happens is you actually damage the integrity and the name of your business um, you actually, you actually damage that name in, in not having a strategy like that. And that then leads to, to, to situations where when you don't have that kind of flow, it drops off. So, yeah, um, they're, they're, so they're some of the primary things you need to think about. It's honestly the first thing you need to do and do it properly and do it well. Um, you know, and take it very seriously because then from that, Everything else gets informed. The website build, you know, build gets informed. The, the, um, you know, the, the you might be offering offering uh, educational materials, so and educational emails and things like that. You know, we often set those up for our clients where, you know, there's automated machines that are that are offering out educational material, and it's all tied back to the strategy. Nothing is out of place. Nothing. Not an email. Not a text. Not a post. Not an ad. It's all consistent. You, you, and, and some of the masters of this um, uh, would be people like, you know, iPhone and Mac. I mean, you know, you've got to think about your business that way, particularly now more than ever. So, um, you know, we can have a bit of a look at their, their guidebook here. Um, don't burn your money. So we, we're going for a very, very specific demographic. It's, it's so subtle. Don't burn your money. And it, what's happening is it's emotionally triggering for those people that are looking to exit fossil fuels, the burning of fossil fuels and, and, and the burning of fossil fuels and the burning of their money and looking at as well, what he's doing, this client of ours is benefiting from the lack of strategy of his competitors, the lack of messaging and the lack of integrity of his solar competitors. He's benefit, he's monopolizing on it and using it to be getting this consistent inquiry, to have those leads coming in day after day after day that are his own leads that are, that are um, not shared or being multiply called from people. Um, yeah, so that, that's, um, that's really, I, it might sound simple, but basically, um, and I'll give a real life example from me as well. Um, so uh, five or six years ago when, I decided to move more into eco building. Tim, have I got, am I wrapping? Just, can I have a, can I have a time check? <laughs> am I, where am I at for time? You're good, Rich. You're good. Okay. But someone will give me a little, <laughs> sure. little thing. No way. Okay. Um, so for example, five or six years ago when, um, you know, we decided that as an agency, 
you know, we're really passionate about our builders and our tradies, but we were really moving into sustainability. You know, we all felt it. We all wanted to do it. And I certainly did. And, and our clients wanted to do it. So a lot of our builders and tradies wanted to do it. We, re, we rewrote our strategy from scratch and we re-began everything. And now, um, and that's when we started working more with solar. And, and so now that messaging took quite a while. I would say it took a year and a half, maybe a year and a half um, or so for the momentum to build around that messaging to the point where we are today, where, where we are inundated with solar companies looking for assistance in exactly what I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm talking about here today. Um, and that came from, from the truth. It came from us wanting to, and, and even our own clients now. So many of our clients that weren't doing sustainable and eco related building or things like that, they've actually been able to, once you've got the channels. So once you've got a machine like this, we call it a complete marketing machine. Once you've got a complete marketing machine set up across your multi channels, you can then point that, wherever you want to go. So you want to now move into smaller, um, you know, high volume products. Maybe um, uh, I mentioned that we've got a client that's about to move into things like the solar pool pump. And that'll take a little while. It might take a six or seven months of messaging, but what's going to end up happening is the perception in the consumer base will be that is that company is the number one company to go to to reduce my energy bills in relation to my consistent pool heating requirements. And, and once you arrive at that place, you, you build on that momentum. And a lot of you know this because a lot of you have probably got excellent word of mouth and you've been around for a long time and these concepts are probably in a lot of, of what you do. But we tend to find 90% even of the big companies that approach us, like even this company when, when they came, that the messaging and the quality of their technology and their systems and the way that they were operating was absolutely not consistent. It was absolutely not congruent and it was absolutely not pointing them where they, they thought they wanted to go. They had some random SEO over here and they had someone putting some posts up and they've got someone that does some email blasts from time to time. It was like a hodgepodge kind of thing happening, you know, sometimes a, a contractor and then a little bit of the internal staff that does a bit of Instagram. It was just, it's just like a spaghetti mess. Um, and so what I encourage you guys to walk away with today, um, particularly those of you that p potentially have chosen to, to stay home, I'm, I'm actually at, at home as well for a little bit now, um, is, is to stop. Don't freak out about the market going anywhere, but actually sit down and work out how you're going to react to it. How could you actually use this as an opportunity to refresh yourself, refresh your position and go back out to market better than you ever have before and actually encourage the consumers to, because they, they, people want autonomy over their power. The, the, the rate of solar growth in America where I've got a virtual company is, is, is incredible. So I've got the same thing over there, uh, you know, basically running the, the leads all come in and they go to, uh, special sales team that do zoom calls they zoom down on the roof they install the panels virtually on the homes it puts out a full proposal explains the entire thing and it goes through a system where the person they don't have to no one has to go to their house or anything until the final moments for coming around and doing the check on the power supplies and the, the basic setup and then they're in so and our clients in Australia and New Zealand um, uh, so NZ we we heard from inside uh, inside information um, that probably within 10 days, they'll go back to level three, which solar will be back out. In Australia right now though, um, you know, don't take it 100% from me, but, but so far there's not an actual stoppage on the ability to go out and install solar on roofs. Um, there are requirements, there are social distancing and all of that. And I'm sure a lot of you are still continuing to install and you're employing those things. But what I'm saying is get the messaging out there in a clearer, more consistent way encourage your marketplace to be motivated encourage them to be to be you know taking advantage of um of this situation to get to, to take their to take their power back um and 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 control their their control their their bills and control their um yeah their direction so um yeah i i i I kind of wanted to do that, Tim. I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, there's just so much. There's just <laughs> that I'd love to 
kind of dive into and, and, and other exciting things. But I, I felt to start there, if that's, how does that, how does that feel? Um, that sounds great, Rich. I've just instantly had a technical problem as you were winding up there. Let's see if I can. Yep. Yep. Fantastic. I can see myself. That's always a good sign. Um, <laughs> thanks for that, Rich. A &A, really... if anyone had a... Yeah, no, look, if anyone's got some quick questions um, for Rich, um, there's a question button. Try and use the Q&A button, not the, um, the chat button, to write questions. Um, otherwise, we can move on. But feel free to write some questions for Rick if you've got any queries. Otherwise, um, I really thank you for sharing your experience, um, especially because you market solar and it's something that you've spent time focusing on. Um, We've got Rich, Get Green Energy is our customer. Thank, um, good on. Thank you. So there you go. Oh, cool. So we're getting some yeah, praise. We're, all, we're all in it together. We're all trying to help each other out. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, Rick, I might, um, we're going to have a little panel chat later on. So I'll bring you back in for that panel chat and we can um, just get a sense of how we're all coping with um, with this, whether we're working at home, with it, how our businesses are going. And so we're going to kind of have a little bit more of a relaxed chat about that in a little while. But before then, we've got Dean Williamson, who is from Goodwe. And Dean is going to be giving us a presentation. Um, I want everyone to spend um, particular uh, attention to Dean's presentation because he is giving away at the end of it he's going to be having a quiz and with that quiz he's going to be asking um, four or five questions and giving away a $500 voucher which gives us uh, gives you a discount um, on Goodwe high voltage storage inverters. Um, so if you're lucky enough to get the answer right, we're going to be um, first one right and we'll get you to put your details in the chat. Um, but I will happily welcome Dean now. Dean is the country manager for Goodwe. So, Dean, welcome. Thanks, Thanks Tim. You can. That's um, come up for you, is it, Tim? Um, yeah, you're dropping out, but it, yeah, perfect. I can see your presentation now. That's looking good. Okay. No worries. Well, thank you very much, Tim, and also thank you very much to One Stop for having us a part of your uh, webinars, uh, for giving us the opportunity to present today. Um, I'll go through a little bit about who Goodwe is as a global organisation. We are in Australia. Some of the things we're doing to help out our customers, especially in this difficult time, and also some of the products that we're bringing out that uh, increases the flexibility for the installers. As well. And as Tim mentioned, at the end, we'll be asking a few questions, effectively the first ones to jump in with the answers. Get the prize. So Goodwe as a global organization, we've got just on a thousand employees at the moment globally. Over 200 of those are in R&D. Um, we're actually increasing that within the next 12 months. Uh, we're looking to continue to expand rapidly. Over the last four years, we've, we've expanded um, considerably uh, globally uh, and also uh, increased the sales revenue nearly 100% year on year for the last three or four years. We've currently got uh, two manufacturing facilities. One of those is in Suzhou, China, where our head office headquarters is based, and the other manufacturing facilities in Guangzhou, China. Uh, and at the moment, we've got just on 12 gigawatts of capacity. Uh, and due to the recent coronavirus disruptions, I suppose it's had an impact on all of the, not only Chinese inverter manufacturers, but all of the manufacturers globally. Uh, and this slide here just gives you a snapshot of exactly how we were impacted. We were very lucky in the sense that uh, after the Chinese New Year, we were planning on going back to manufacturing. Uh, the coronavirus outbreak meant that we weren't able to do that for a period of time. 
I think we prepared to resume back on the 3rd of February. Um, but in reality, it wasn't until the 7th of February in which case our Guangdu factory opened. Um, that was a really, really good result. Guangdu is where 80% of our manufacturing capacity comes from. Um, a few hours away from Suzhou in a smaller city. And as a result, the restrictions weren't as heavy. So um, that meant that we were actually the first Chinese inverter manufacturer who was given permit to reopen their manufacturing facilities. On the 10th of February, you can see there, we opened our other manufacturing uh, plant in Suzhou, where our other 20% gets manufactured from. Uh, and then you can see at that time, we're at about 50% capacity. Uh, the 24th of February, we hit about 80% capacity compared to the same time last year, that is. Uh, on the 10th of March, we're at 120% capacity compared to the same time last year. And right now, um, we've got a really high order volume. We're actually at 150% of same capacity as the same time last year. So uh, we're in a really good position in that respect. We also were able to buffer ourselves from the impact of this because we had a significant local stock holding as well. So what we saw during that time was that a couple of our customers' orders were delayed one to two weeks. That was really the worst we saw of it uh, because we did have that local stock holding was significant and our production line actually put on more lines of production to essentially catch up to any lost production. But every manufacturer effectively was impacted somewhat, whether it was a direct impact on production capacity or whether it was actually trying to source freight companies, getting your ships to the port or even sourcing componentry. As I said, um, we were of course impacted somewhat, but, um, but compared to the general market consensus, we came out fairly unscathed. One of the things we're doing to help our customers throughout this is that we've sent uh, thousands of masks actually to our distributors, in particular One Stop Warehouse, uh, in order for them to be able to supply to the retailers and the installers. So I encourage any of you that are listening, um, if you are uh, purchasing from One Stop and you don't have masks or you need to supply more to your installers, your contractors, please contact them because we have supplied uh, a lot of masks to them as a result of, um, of that and to keep the workplace a little bit safe. As Tim mentioned earlier, uh, every listener today will effectively get a voucher for $500 off any of our storage high voltage inverters. As long as you spend $5,000 or more, you do get the $500 and that's effectively valid until the 31st of December this year. So uh, if you are gonna make a purchase on storage, make sure you uh, contact One Stop, let them know you wanna cash in your voucher, and, um, and you can do that as a set time between now and the end of the year. Just to reiterate, that is on our high voltage storage converters. Some of the things that we're trying to do to help our customers from a product perspective we've listed here. And the first one is that, I've said it a few times before, we feel like the installers and the retailers are driving the solar market. As a result, our strategy of Goodware Australia is that we want to develop the most easiest, the most flexible, and also innovative inverter for the installers to use, because we feel like if we do that, then effectively they're going to want to use it more than our competitors. Some of the ways in which we're trying to do that is firstly, we're building in a DC switch into all of the new models that we're bringing out into the market. Uh, and that includes the new three MPVT large single phase range that we recently introduced a few weeks ago. So that's called MS range. That comes in a five kilowatt, a six, a seven, an 8.5, and a 10 kilowatt single phase inverter. And that has three MPV trackers. So that's got, DC switch built in. Also, our uh, current dual tracker single phase DNS range, which started building uh, the DC switch into those as well. And then also our SMT range, which is our commercial three tracker range that we're literally just releasing to the market now 25, a 29.99, and a 36 kilowatt commercial inverter. And then lastly, new high voltage single phase hybrid which is called eh and effectively that was our first product 
we released into the market with the built-in VC suite. Next is Vault Var and Vault Watt. Every inverter has to be able to meet the DNSP uh, local parameters and requirements. Uh, and what I mean by that is every DNSP in Australia now has different settings they require inverter manufacturers or installers to set the inverter at um, to adhere to their um, uh, to adhere to their volt bar volt watt requirement. We think we've got the best solution for that in that we've actually preloaded all of these settings into the inverter. And when you're commissioning the inverter, you simply go through the country codes and all the DNSPs are listed in there. And you simply just select the DNSP where you're installing it. And that actually preloads all of those settings into the inverter for you, other than having to manually input those um, with a lot of the competitors you're required to. Um, I mentioned it before, we're building more trackers into our inverters. So the new MS single phase range gives us three trackers. Um, the only single phase uh, inverter on the market with three trackers. And it also gives us the largest single phase range on the market now with everything from 1.5 uh, up to 10 kilowatts single phase. The next one is probably the most important one, especially giving, given the current circumstances with coronavirus and everyone wants to keep their distance from one another and limit the contact as much as possible. So with our Goodway inverters, we've got the ability to have remote serviceability. What I mean by that is that if you want to update firmware or parameters on the inverter, such as voltages, you don't actually have to go out to site to do that. So what we're saying is that as long as it's connected to a monitoring platform, which is sent, you give us the serial number and we can actually remotely update that for you without you having to go on site which in, in the current climate, I think is really important. And um, Next is uh, warranties. We're offering longer warranties. Previously, it was always five-year warranties across all of our range. Uh, for the DNS range now, we're offering five plus five. The new MS range is five plus five. Um, any new inverter we bring into the country, we're looking to offer longer warranties. Plus, we've slashed the price of our extended warranties. And you can also extend up to 10 years full, 12 years full, and full 15 year warranties now as well with all of our products. And last but not least, our built in export control. With our single phase range, including the new large single phase, you don't need an additional meter to achieve export control. We've built that functionality into the inverter uh, without the need for an additional meter. All you require is a CT to go into that. And lastly, our storage inverters. You're probably familiar with uh, the current range of low voltage storage inverters we've got, which is the ES, the EM hybrids. The only difference there is that the EM is 50 amps, the ES is 100 amp charge and discharge. We've also had the SBP in the market for a while, which is an AC couple retrofit. Um, and we're newly introduced a new single phase high voltage hybrid, which is the EH product. Uh, this is a really flexible product and this is one of those high voltage products that effectively you can claim um, your $500 discount with. Um, all of our storage products have UPS level of functionality. Um, what we mean by that is uh, when the grid cuts out, our inverters will kick in within 10 milliseconds as opposed to five seconds, which is EPS or emergency power supply. And the real advantage there is um, Effectively, appliances won't reset, uh, won't set and reset. That's the difference between EPS and UPS. All of the meters, the accessories we provide in your inverter free of charge, and our backup is inbuilt. Um, there's no additional device you need to purchase for that. Um, that's with all of our range. The BH inverter there that you can see is the only one we haven't released to the market, very similar to the SBP. It's an AC couple retrofit. The only difference is the BH is high voltage and the SBP is low voltage. And then last but not least, our three phase high voltage hybrid, which is the ET. Um, that comes in five kilowatt and 10 kilowatt. And again, that's one of those products that you can redeem your $500 voucher for. That's basically it for myself before we start the Q&A. Um, but again, the one thing I'll say is that uh, what we're trying to do is we are trying to make it easier for our installers by um, not always lowering the price, but trying to build as much functionality into the product as possible. 
uh, trying to limit the amount of accessories you need, integrate as many accessories as possible, um, and effectively, hopefully, that reduces installation time. It makes it easier for the installer. So thanks very much for that. I'll just stop sharing my screen there. And we have, as Tim mentioned, we have a few questions that we'll ask. And if you have the opportunity, uh, make sure you write the answer in the Q&A section there. And the first person to answer will effectively win uh, a voucher. So we're gonna give away five $50 Amazon vouchers. And then we'll also have uh, a lucky draw winner as well, which will just be selected at random amongst all the listeners. Uh, I'll ask the first question now. Our factory is operating at what percentage of capacity compared to the same time last year? If you remember in the first slide that I mentioned, um, we started talking about the manufacturing capacity and we mentioned that it was operating at either 100%, 120% or 150 compared to last year. I've got, I've got the answer here and Albert, Albert got the correct answer first with 150%. Well done, Albert. The next question was, as a result of the coronavirus, um, we're doing a few things to help out our customers. Can anyone mention one of the things that we're doing to help out? And we've got an answer here. Arif got the question right by saying sending masks. That's right, Robert just missed out there. Um, but yeah, we're sending thousands of masks to our distributors who can supply those to the installer. Um, next question was, uh, from a product perspective, where we're doing a few things, trying to make our products a little bit more flexible. Can anyone name one of the things that we're doing to make the product more flexible and easy for installers? Dick Crompton um, got, the, got the answer correctly by mentioning that we're building DC switches into the product. Um, so there were a couple of answers there. You could have said build DC switches in, uh, offering longer warranties, uh, building export, in, inbuilt export control, these sort of features in. So well done, Dick. Uh, second last question was, uh, we're offering a $500 discount uh, today for what type of product? Does anyone remember what type of product you can redeem your $500 discount with? And Fayaz got the right, right answer there with uh, high voltage storage. So well done, Fayaz. Last but not least, the question is, um, if you remember I spoke about, we've got the ability to do remote serviceability uh, on our inverters now. Um, however, there's one condition for you to be able to for us to be able to remotely update the firmware or um, the parameters like voltages, et cetera, uh, there's one proviso. Does anyone know what that was? Ron Williams got, got the correct answer. I think you might've spelled it slightly wrong, but he got the right answer is that you need to be connected to our SEMS portal. So. We do have the ability there to um, upgrade any of the parameters on the inverter, as long as you are connected to our monitoring portal, which is called SEMS. Uh, you can download the app, it's free, just type in SEMS, and, um, and effectively that gives you the ability to have your system monitored, and, you, and that's obviously free. You can do that from any uh, iPhone or Android as well. And then last, last uh, but not least, we're gonna give away one random uh, $50 gift voucher, a lucky draw, and um, and DD from one stop in the uh, comments section, gonna randomly select uh, a name or an email address. Did we have that one there, DD? Uh, congratulations, yeah, Tom, yeah, Tom Ritchie. <laughs> Tom, where is Tom? Tom Ritchie. Tom, do you wanna say something? That's Tom, okay. You... Thank you. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. <laughs> no worries, Tom, and uh, and thanks, Didi. Thanks, That's Tim. Right. Yeah, thanks for listening.
Thanks, Dean. I really appreciated that talk, and I really appreciated the fact that you um you reached out to everyone with um those vouchers and those prizes. That's just fantastic. Um, what we're going to do now, and this is a finger, fingers crossed moment, is I'm going to run a, a video from FEMA, and after that video, we're going to just have a bit more of a relaxed talk, um, and get to know each other. So. Um, and get to know how we're all coping a little bit more with, with, with this situation. So let me just hopefully swap over some sound. If Let me know if you can hear it, because otherwise we might have to um, put it in the package or run it again later. Um, Okay, so hopefully this works. Here comes the storm. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, fantastic. Let me come back to. Oops. and microphone so hopefully we're all back now um and we're back um okay i'm just going to invite the panelists um firstly just where are you working at the moment are you working from home are you working are you going back and forth to the office what's your your process at the moment Oh, I'll jump in. Sorry, Cara, you go. Oh, I was going to say, Tim, for me, it's situation normal, to be perfectly honest. I work from home, so, and I work <laughs> online. Yeah, I mean, from, from our perspective, I've got um, people uh, working from home where they can. And uh, here in Melbourne, um, the way our office is configured, we've got some separate rooms. So we've got sort of one person in each room to maintain the uh, proper distancing. So it's a bit of a combination depending on the circumstances. Yeah, it's Fantastic. Steve Plus as well, Tim, uh, working from home, but uh, engaging customers on a different time frame as well, based on when they're available. Uh, sometimes on the weekend, I've got a couple of customers who asked me to give them a call, even though they're working from home, but they want to allocate the time just to devote themselves with the current job as well. They don't want to, you know, talk um, anything else. So yeah, arranging time at a different level as well that saves us our commute on a daily basis well i certainly know for us for for me personally i'm definitely at home my wife's um in corona land my my daughter's working in corona land in, as a hospital um in icu so they're practically keeping me in this room to be isolated to keep me safe so that's been an interesting um, experiment but for one stop warehouse it's been really interesting too because um, we're still operating um, the warehouses but we're doing that in a way that we're really trying to practice social distancing practice um, there's always hand wipes and hand washing available and um, there's a process um, that we're putting out for people when they're, they're picking up deliveries and stuff. So it, it's it's that planning, I guess, to, to stay safe, stay distanced, but also stay operational. 
so that's been um that's been a really focused thing i'm actually um delighted to be able to go out to the warehouse next wednesday and we're going to shoot a little training video or a little video to just show people the process of, of what it's like to um to pick up goods and 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 deal with the people on site <coughs> um we we uh, are we all doing a home, ahead, i was saying on that point that um we're doing the home office thing i'm i'm the, the office is in byron bay itself um uh, in the industrial state, which has a few interesting tech offices there now, some of the some of the biggest technology companies in the world have decided Byron Bay is where they want to make home. Um, but we went home. But we what we've been doing is rotating certain staff because what we've started to notice is a bit of mental fatigue, a little bit of emotional strain of trying to manage home life and work life. And so what we've sort of put in place is kind of like we call it the break point pass. It's like I'm reaching break point. I need to go in and use one of the office cubicles for a couple of days just to kind of have that environment to focus, you know, and we're just going in in groups of a maximum of three at a time. And since we've implemented that, it's been quite good because a couple of us were just, you know, particularly those with children, just kind of hitting the wall a little bit, to be honest, and, and kind of needing that, needing that um, change, you know, that's worked for us. Fantastic. I think um, I think that that idea of maintaining our mental strength and our mental health is really important. So um, I recommend that for everybody, even if um, just reach out or or call out to people if you need um, help for that. Um, I just wanted to throw it out to the panel. What kind of ideas have you had to to I guess either sustain business or connect with customers? What are, what what are the kind of things that you're doing in this time where obviously there is a slowdown um how are you adapting and evolving your business in that space now i know for you rich you're going to be doing lots of social media because that's actually how i connected with you to begin with so i know that that works i mean yeah 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 um, oh, do you want me to answer that, or you? Or you, you uh, no, no. I, I you, guess that was, I, I might leave that for everybody else to answer because I know that that would be your solution. Yeah, I mean, well, it's the... part of it. It's part of it. But what I was going to say is the the big thing because yeah, I mean, obviously that's a great way we we have inquiry coming in because of that, and so but we did two things. We um, we doubled our marketing budget within um, five days of the lockdown notification. We went and doubled our marketing budget. Um, because we knew that our competitors would reduce theirs and we wanted to take advantage of that space that they've opened up. And we recommended that for a number of our clients and that's been working for them. Uh, those that had a little bit of cash reserves and those that had, I guess, the courage, <laughs> the strength. Um, but the other thing we've done um, is we've focused extremely hard hard on our previous client bases over the 15 years we've actually gone back with things to help them things to offer them and and so it's a double we're still using social media and digital to do it but really really i would say huge focus on the past so all the database work and all the people we've ever been in touch with getting really really good with making sure we're getting stuff to them that's been us fantastic thanks rich jason you had something to contribute there Oh, yes, sorry. So, I mean, I think like we're doing today here right now, webinars certainly coming the medium of choice to get the message out there to a broad um, mm. audience as possible and just trying to uh, ramp up that digital engagement, whether it's through encouraging people to join mailing lists, uh, get some survey data, those sorts of channels. So we've certainly been turning to those uh, very strongly. Fantastic. Um, last question. Um, how do we maintain optimism? Like, how do we maintain it for our businesses, for our, our, our workmates? Um, what What are the ways that, that that we we reach out within our organisation, and I guess even within our families and friends, to just I guess buoy hope to keep that that going. Anyone? Give me f I can answer that. Um, sure. <laughs> so what I do is I reach out to people. I'm generally the person that people come to for help. And in these times, people start to struggle. So it is if you're thinking about somebody, reach out to, it, to them. Um, for me, it's come back to just some deep breathing. Like seriously, for me, I live with um, high risk people so 
it's my husband and I that are going out of the house and everybody else has to stay at home. And so I have to take some really serious deep breaths before I head out because I don't know what I'm going to bring back into the household. Um, and your wife and daughter are certainly, you know, like that. Um, and the other thing that I think of is, is looking back to what your value structure is personally and as a business and really tapping in and aligning with that. Because when we get out of whack with our value structure, that's when we get, um, psychologists call it dissonance. You, you get that weird feeling in your gut and you feel like something's not quite right and you're not being true to yourself. If you stick with that and act from that place first, you're going to be better. And that will work in good times and in bad. Um, and people see, see that and it looks authentic because it is authentic. Mm, I agree. Thanks, Cara. That, um, that's such, that's, I was going to say, that's such an amazing point you've just made. Like, and, and I'll give a real world example of how that's hitting the bottom line at a, at a, at a finance level. Uh, for us and our customers, for example, people that have hit that dissonance state that you mentioned, cut clients of ours as well, calling, just completely dis freaked out, shut down, quick, we need to turn off everything. You know, you know, they fired the staff within 24 hours, um, they've chucked the whole baby out with the bullet laugh and they're ringing me saying, turn off all the marketing, we can't, you know, the whole world's crashing and you've got to shut it all down. And then we kind of been approaching them with, hang on, let's stop, breathe, have a look. And then we've been kind of working with them at that level and kind of, um, for example, we've been doing stuff like long-term clients, just helping them, just going, right, you've got a 50% discount for three months. And then we're saying to them, it's all good. In a year or two, we'll make it back. We're together. We're helping you. You're still working. We're still marketing you. So that I feel there's been a bit more humanness forced in the yeah. business relationships as a result of the sensitivity. I, I, I don't know. but And then the... the some of our clients have taken our advice and they're pass, they're intending to pass on the job keeper money. Once profits hit a particular level, they're going to pass that on and we're going to advertise that. We're going to put marketing out that says, Hey, sign up with us. We're actually going to provide more. We're actually going to help you more than we ever have during this crisis. And, um, but that's come after they've gotten through that kind of what you just mentioned. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks Rick. Um, I'm going to wrap that up there because we've got to move on. We've got lots of things, but thanks everyone. I think it's just nice to 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 show a bit more of a human um, side at the moment, as Rick was saying. Rich was saying. Um, so our next speaker is Sid Shahid from Discover Energy. He's the national sales manager for Discover Energy. Um, Sid, Hello. would you like to jump in? Sure. Uh, I'm just Thank you. Share my screen. Can everyone see that? Um, can you guys see my screen? Yeah. We it's can. Good. It looks good. Fantastic. Okay. Um, thank you, guys. Uh, my name is Sid Shea. That's team mentioned, National Sales Manager at Discover Energy. Um, I'm going to uh, sort of uh, fly through this with limited time, uh, but I'm sure these videos will be sent to everyone on the webinar today. And uh, there's the contact details of me and my colleague at the end that we can talk one-in-one uh, -one, uh, constructive discussions and how we can partner with this. So, uh, and thank you team for this amazing um, new branding for Discover Energy. I think it looks fantastic. Our new slogan is goodbye power bills and hello smart energy income. And we'll talk more about that, how that all uh, means. Um, this is uh, the digital uh, energy decade. We are basically transforming the, the energy market. There's a lot going on and it's quite exciting time for this decade as what Discover Energy has built in regards to uh, virtual power plant and energy trading. It's just a new big thing uh, and that is evolution. And one of the new things that my CEO just mentioned, uh, this CEO and CTO um, sent me uh, before this um, presentation was uh, how the our bill uh, can also show customers sort of BPP events happen that appears on customers' bills, and we'll talk about that later stage. Um, so, Discover Energy is Australia's newest and most innovative electricity uh, retailer. We put green at the forefront of our business and for generations to come, with a focus on solar storage, or to create a greater savings. Now, that being said, we are an energy retailer. We have license to sell electricity to everyone. Uh, to commercial, uh, to embedded to everyone, but our focus is 
the battery and sto uh, the storage customers only at this stage. Uh, but the, the opportunity uh, as a channel partner is, uh, is enormous over there. Uh, it's all about long-term relationship building with us. Uh, Discover Energy is indeed transforming the electricity market through the digital energy solution. Uh, and it's good, good time, good space to be in right now. The electricity market in Australia itself is undergoing a significant transaction. Renewable energy is clean. Uh, energy innovation, including emerging technologies, will play an increasingly important role in a modern and dynamic electricity market and we are witnessing that uh, at first hand. Uh, the industry itself in, in Australia is, is valued at $43 billion, um, just the electricity market, and you can see the market shareholds by Origin, AGL, Energy Australia. Uh, you know, these guys, they don't really like us because we are more on a technology-based and um, you know, virtual power plant is our main, main strength and energy trading is our main strength. So this is a unique concept in the energy market. And uh, yeah, without making a lot of noise, but we are really making an impact into the market. Uh, hence why it's a good time to partner with an with energy retailer who's spinning in this field and contributing towards the uh, clean energy with solar and battery. Hence why we're here talking to uh, solar retailers that you know, we should be partnering up or, or looking towards battery storage uh, for your for energy users. Um, so I, I mentioned virtual power plant, what is our Virtual power plant, it's a centralized cloud-based technology um, through solar and batteries. So uh, a traditional way of virtual power plant, you need an actual device that goes in the meter box. We have eliminated that uh, hardware device. We have integrated our, our IPA uh, address uh, software inside the inverter. Uh, and then through cloud-based, we remotely we can access customers uh, uh, through the inverter. We can access customers' battery and dispatch into our VPP van when it needs to be. So in, in, in a nutshell, that's a virtual power plant. Uh, and I'm sure in the next 10 years, most, most brand new homes will come built with a um, storage solution moving forward. Uh, how does it work? So a bit of a graph there, the sun comes up, solar generates, uh, fills a battery, um, excess energy battery is sold through the cloud to the uh, export to the network. Uh, and, and that's how the customer makes money you know, when we do the VPP event for them. The, the, the breakthrough we have got, Discover Energy has got as electricity market is, a, is a energy trading. Uh, this is actually a live trading uh, portal, uh, my account, this is our, uh, uh, Jeff who's our CTO, uh, that's his account. You can see uh, there's, this was yesterday's snapshot I took that you can see there, the live trading. Um, uh, this is a historical data, you can see what's the trading market was at the time. And the other graph that was here, that this is the sort of trading that he's been doing himself and what other VPP events that the company has been doing for him. So, you know, when I'm, when I'm discussing this with the one-in-one -one, uh, solar companies, I can go in more, uh, more detail how this works, what the numbers look like, what are the prices are at a, at a uh, spot prices are at any given time. So, but this is the breakthrough that Discover Energy has got as an energy retailer, where we can show a VP event on customers bill. No one at this point is doing this. Uh, this uh, few other companies out there who's got a VPP uh, set of a, a you know, system in place, but we are the first one, A, who's got a um, energy trading platform uh, on, on customers bill. B, they can actually see when we do a VPP event, when happened, what time, to what time happened, what was the price and what, what it generated. So it's all, um, this is all new, uh, but it's all happening. So we're not at a, Theory age anymore. We are in a practice uh, doing this now. Um, so, a, a customer when we sign a customer, an end user. I'm talking about when we sign an end user. This is what they get to see on the on a, on their account. So, you know, the electricity. You can see Jeff is sitting with two hundred eleven dollars and six cents credit. His uh, his solar system is uh, you know up and running. You can see you can see the uh, monitoring of the system on this account as well. The bills, the energy trading. So, at one portal in my account, customers can see the overview. What's going on? They can pay the bill from there. Um, they can uh, see what the solar system is uh, generating, uh, what's coming in, what's going out, what the energy trading is like, uh, and what's, what price is it sitting on at the moment, and all that jazz. Um, so this, that's what the customer gets to see, uh, what it's uh, generating from the solar's point of view. Um, overview again. So we've got a slide. So what, what brings us here, like, you know, in terms of how do we go to the market, it's a bit of a reverse cycle approach. We have a we have an interest to become uh, to utilizing solar companies uh, who are selling batteries mainly at this point uh, to become a channel partner with us, and we prefer them to go to the market when selling 
battery to the end user is to uh, attach our energy plan with this. Now, nine out of the time, we know that the end user always asks the solar retailer, which uh, energy provider would you prefer? And, and, you know, this is the good timing because as, as a Discover Energy, we are paying the highest feeding tariff in Australia. Our rates are quite competitive. Uh, we have an energy trading platform that the customers can trade themselves, a virtual power plant where we can uh, do a VPP event and split the profit with the customers. So the added value for a solar company uh, or, or sales guys on the field to sell a battery is a lot more, it can become a lot more easier when you partner with Discover Energy because all this added value uh, Andy's will get. Keeping in mind, this is not available to everyone um, unless we, become, unless we uh, sign an agreement and you become our channel partner. So, um, so these are the benefits. Uh, again, uh, the highest feeding tariff in Australia and it is trading power bills. You know, bills will be a thing of the past. Receive a competitive price uh, as in the plan. Uh, quicker on ROI uh, on a solar in storage. Um, free DE insight. Uh, this is already now in, is integrated with the with my account where customers can see all this stuff um, and uh, become part of the VPP community. Uh, you, you know, I was speaking to a lot of uh, customers in uh, in Adelaide uh, yesterday and day before, where you know when the bushfires happened at the beginning of this year. Uh, the energy spot price went really high and when we did the VPP event they actually make money through their uh, storage system and they're actually helping the community who's out of power at the, at the same time so you know utilizing this um, um, wards to, to make them understand it, it, it helps to close a more deal and, I, and I've, I'm doing it myself and I'm closing deals over the phone sitting in Sydney but making deals in, in, in Adelaide just by emphasizing this topic that hey it's you you know your system will generate you, you make you a quick return in investment you're helping the community and you, you know, you're making money from your system as well. Um, why Discover Energy? You know, create a new revenue source for your business. The electricity industry is about to take up 100%. So by adding this, yes, what we're saying is if you become a channel partner with us, uh, we'll pay you a commission on solar and storage plan, every customer you sell, and that can be discussed one-on-one. -on -one. If you show interest, get in touch. We will discuss how we strategize this. Uh, we're promoting, we are coming up with a marketing uh, exposure, not just on the website, but doing a full social media campaign and uh, co-branding with you as well. If you want to utilize our brand and really go to the market and do co-branding, we can do that too. Uh, and there will be sales support. We will we'll help you guide you through. Uh, and second stage of this, which most channel partners ask, is there a trailing commission? Is there a trailing commission? Yes, there will be a trailing commission. It's all about, for us, it's matter of, before we got to walk first before we start running. So once we get our channel partners on board, we get some numbers to the board, we see everything's working fine, then we can set a strategy at X number, X number of sales we need, and we can talk about trailing commission. Yeah, that is available, but it's all about putting that uh, pen to paper and then having strategy start going forward. So we can talk about all this, uh, you know, at later stage, who, anyone is interested to become a partner and how it all work in, in the future with us. Um, uh, the competitive uh, products that are there with the Discover Energy, like I said earlier, our uh, virtual power plant is a first-hand technology where our software is integrated inside the inverter. And currently, this is the uh, four products that's up and running. Alpha ESS, uh, Goodwe has been fantastic, uh, Sangro, and Easto. So these four products is currently uh, available, you know, with uh, one, uh, one, uh, one software house, and they have... Um, VPP, these are VPP ready product. Uh, we are not limited to this. We are working with other brands as well. Uh, Tesla, Fronis, SMA, we're talking to them. Um, Solar Edge, it's already in the work. Uh, it should be ready in four weeks time. So, uh, you know, I know some, some uh, solar companies prefers uh, Solar Edge a lot. Uh, yes, uh, it's all in the work, in progress right now. So give, give me three to four weeks, we'll have Solar Edge ready as well. So. We can talk about if you have existing customers who have sold solar edge inverter along with LG Cam battery or, or any battery that's compatible with us. You know that's your uh, low hanging fruit that we can tap into straight away. Um, contact us for more information. Uh, again, my name is Sid Shahid, and my colleague Menbina uh, was a BDM with us as well. So we'll be happy to happy to train you, educate you how to utilize our portal, how to call the customer on on energy plan. Uh, and, and how to close more deal for your battery storage system. 
Um, so that, that's all pretty much from, from my end, uh, Tim. Um, I know we had to keep it a bit short this time mm -hmm. around, but happy to share any question and answer if there's any. Um, or we can, uh, you know, if customers or partners are interested to become, to know more, get in touch with us, I'll be happy to engage with you. Thanks, Steve. Really appreciate that. Um, let me switch me back on. Um, if anyone's got any questions for Sid, throw them in the sidebar in the question Q and A. Um, I think uh, Discover Energy is just—it's a really exciting space to be in. To think that um, you can stop paying power bills and start paying the grid and making money on that, I think is just an amazing um, technology to, to, to revolutionise households, revolutionise how we deal with energy. And certainly with the, as you pointed out, the oncoming of, of more and more um, need for uh, solar powered cars, um, oh, sorry, um, battery powered cars, yeah. the, the, yeah. the demand is going to be so much greater. So, yeah, Absolutely. Really and exciting. this is, uh, Tim, this is uh, what the technology that the company has created in terms of adding a software inside the inverter. Uh, we've actually got a patent in place for this now, so no one else has done that. Uh, like I said, mm. we are the first in the market to come up with a software-based VPP, a virtual power plant uh, through the inverter directly. And that's, you know, uh, heads off to One Stop Warehouse because of the capacity they have to engage with this sort of uh, manufacturers. Thank you. Um, Sid, one question. If I, if I am a solar power um, installer, um, mm -hmm. how, what, what sort of steps would I take to want to, um, to, want to become a part of your um, partnership? Sure. So very good. Either get in touch with myself or my colleague, Mambina. Uh, we can have a conversation about where your business is, how much batteries is doing, uh, and then we can, we'll send you an agreement uh, and give you access to our portal and then start going from there. So it's very simple, no rocket science. We're here to help you grow your business uh, and to sell more batteries uh, in, the city, in, you know, in your field. Fantastic. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you for no your problem. time. Um, our next speaker is Cara Lambert. Now, as I said before, Cara is, um, does a balance between psychology and business. So she helps us kind of understand our customer and helps us um, drive sales through, through uh, I guess, a more sensitive approach to our customers. So um, I'm going to welcome Cara in and um, let her run the show. Thanks for the introduction there, Tim. And thank you for One Stop Warehouse for having me on. Um, I had to be perfectly honest when I was looking at um, Jason's information that came through about the um, where your clients sit. I was trying to work out where I sat because I actually do have solar on my house. I'm in installing a new system in as part of a new build and um, so I am the perfect client but I'm trying to work out Jason where I actually sat with those as one of your clients so um, it was quite interesting about that so what I've got here is a little presentation when Tim came to me and said to me Cara look I want to to you to talk about um, social media psychology and business. And I thought, well, what do my clients normally come to me with? So I have a couple of trades. I have a couple of electricians that work with me. Um, Alison Charpentier, who's on the call earlier, she and I actually work together. She's in Queensland. A solar installer up in Queensland is like, well, what are the big issues that my clients have come to me? And that's what I want to talk to you about. But I want to talk primarily around Facebook when it comes to social media. Uh, and the reason I'm picking social media and um, is that it's this constant front of mind that we need to have when it comes to marketing because you will find that um i know rich said earlier we're on our phones more and so you want to make sure that you're constantly providing the right information to your audience 
that will get them over the line eventually. And if you're not getting them over the, the line as a client, you're going to get them over the line as a brand ambassador for you. So even um, one stop so one stop warehouse or um, Sid, this constant top of mind positioning will help you in your marketing in the good times and in the trying times like we're in right now. So what I want to talk to you first of all is what Facebook wants because it is their platform. So they're going to promote what they want to distribute to their audience. Those three big issues that psychology actually fixes and some simple changes that you can put in place and profit from today. Because let's face it, we all want to walk out of this with some wins. So this is me. I'm a business consultant um, working from Adelaide. So when you were talking about the fires here in Adelaide, I'm like, yes, that's me. <laughs> um, and we have some of the highest electric electricity prices in Australia. Um, I have a Bachelor of Arts in Psychology and a Graduate Diploma of Management. I've actually been helping businesses come online since 2000 and I've worked with businesses through from those starting to move or moving online to those who have hundreds of thousands of followers. So I've, I've run the gamut. I am a mentor for the New Venture Institute at Flinders University and my specialty is the psychology of social media. Um, so I work with startups and the venture capital space. Uh, I also am a brand ambassador for the Social Media Marketing Institute of Australia. And once again, my specialty there is the psychology of social media. So as Tim said, psychology and the psychology of business is who I am and what I do. So a little bit of a history lesson and a bit of an insight into Facebook. So some business owners will say to me, Cara, why do I need to be on Facebook? I hate Facebook. I don't understand it. Well, the reality check part of this is, is that over 90% of Australians have an active Facebook account. So you kind of can't not be on Facebook anymore. You don't have that option. The other thing is, is that over 50% of people who research a product before they make a purchase do so through, through social media and they go on to make that purchase as well. So if you're not online on social media, you're actually cutting out half of your market as well. So there is a big lost cost there as well. Facebook actually started back in 2004 with a group of five university students and they set it up to keep in touch with their friends um, across the different campus. So they set it up between a couple of different universities in Massachusetts and then by 2006 it was widely distributed across the US and across the world and it was invitation only but it was about connecting people. So I've gone back through the archives for Mark Zuckerberg, okay, um, the spokesperson for, for Facebook. And he said on their 16th birthday this year, we believe progress happens when you give people a voice and bring people together. That's what we stand for. We know there will also be issues when you give more people a voice and new ways to connect and we'll keep working to address them. But we believe in empowering people because at the end of the day, we believe in people. Facebook has always been about people. And so you need to, to get the most out of Facebook. You need to understand the person. So the three big issues that I see that understanding people actually fixes one of them is posting at the wrong time. A lot of, um, and I'm talking mostly to the installers, but um, a lot of the suppliers as well. For my clients, like I said, I've got a couple of clients who are electricians. Their suppliers will post in the middle of the day when the office staff are online, but 
the electrician's actually out in the field. It's the exact same thing. If you're an installer and you're posting to social media in the middle of the day, is it actually the best time? Are your clients actually online? Maybe that's the reason why you're not getting the click-throughs. The next thing issue that people come to me with is that they don't realise this, but it's the, the problem that I see, that the posts are all about what the business wants people to know rather than being about the people they're trying to connect with. And Rich uh, was talking about emotions earlier. And this is this part is going to dig right deep into the psychology and the person and what drives them as well. Um, and Dean was talking about drivers earlier. And the final thing is being afraid to post. So when people, business owners who work with me, they know the time to post and they know what to post, the biggest hurdle is actually getting it out of their own way and posting. So let's go through and answer some of these issues. So when are we on Facebook? So you can see chart here with some numbers and these numbers are actually from a, an annual survey that's done by, they keep changing their names. I think they're called Yellow now. They were census, company that drives yellow pages. And they interview or they survey um, a proportion of the Australian marketplace and it's balanced. It's balanced by age and gender and location and whether you're in a regional area, whether you're in a metropolitan area, it's a balanced and weight, weighted survey. So you can, what I'm saying is you can trust what they're saying here. So it's divided by age and you can see here the most popular time for people to be on social media is in the evening. And then depending on the age bracket, and I think what um, was said at the start was, you know, most of the, the people were in their mid to late 20s, even 30 and above, you're going to find most of your clients fall into this 30 and above age bracket. The next most popular time for them to be online is first thing in the morning. So if you think about what you do personally on social media, you, I don't know about you, but I will be watching TV of a night time and it'll get bored. Or if I, even if I'm watching Netflix, it'll get boring and I will pick up my phone and I will instantly scroll through social media in the evening. The next time I check it is first thing in the morning. I don't check it generally unless I'm on lunch break. I mean, I fit in the 40 to 49 age bracket. Um, the only people that will check it during their breaks um, more often than the first thing in the morning are the 18 to 29 year olds. So what I'm saying is make sure you've got your post going out at the right time. The evening is the right time to be posting. Pages do differ. People really, really don't. Um, so you may find a difference between 5 and 6 p.m. versus somebody else who might find it. It's between 9 and 10 p.m., but it's still evening. The other thing is, is looking at what kind of content you put out at that different time. So if you're trying to bring a customer online and or you're trying to get them through your channel, um, through your funnel, getting them to fill out a contact form and stuff like that, you're better off putting that stuff out in the evening because we've got more time to fill that out. First thing in the morning, we want a quick little pick-me-up, like a, a virtual cup of coffee, basically, to fill any gaps in any knowledge, make us happy, a great meme, a funny thing, as long as it's relevant to our business you can put that stuff out first thing in the morning. But if you're trying to sell and convert, evening is the best time to get your people across. Now, for those of you who do all their social media scheduling um, on a desktop or social media posts on a desktop, on a laptop or a, a big computer, Facebook Creator Studio is the way to go. 
for those of you who do everything on from the car from a phone or from an ipad if you haven't downloaded the pages manager app to your phone from your app store from itunes go out grab it and load it to your phone because that's where you'll be able to schedule your posts so even if it is two o'clock in the afternoon you've just gotten off the job you've taken some great photos and you think yeah you know what i really want to share this with my audience don't post it at two you're not going to get the views on it um, and that means that you're not going to get the algorithm and play to what facebook wants because facebook wants good relevant content that engages the audience jump into the pages manager app do up your post and schedule it there and then and you'll have something going out that night the next thing I wanted to talk about was being too afraid to post. I know the next thing on my list was what to post, but that dives really into the psychology. Whereas this one's got a really good segue. For some people, being afraid to post, actually scheduling the posts for them helps with that fear that gets them right at that point in time. So schedule your posts. It'll help you. Sometimes you've just got to JFDI it. You've just got to rip off the bandage and post. I spoke in the panel session about courage. Have the courage to post. If you're the kind of person who is worried about trolls or worried about being rejected or it not hitting the market or, you know, you get crickets, no one responds, Consider this, that a no is not a no, is generally not a no never, it's a not now. And you just don't know where the people are at, certainly not at this point in time. Um, and by also not posting, not having the courage to post, you're also denying your business a yes as well. So don't say no for your audience. Here's the thing about your audience. If they are uh, not yet right now, it doesn't mean that they're not going to talk to their friends, their family, their next door neighbour about solar and the content that you're putting out and they can be a yes. Your audience can be your best sales staff for you. So have courage and put your content out there. And the final thing is appealing to their psychology and being engaging. What Facebook want is highly relevant and engaging content. And, you know, you want to, to make sure that you appeal to their psychology. So what is in the psychology? Now, this is actually taken from some research done by a couple of marketing professors out of Massachusetts, funnily enough, and what they did is they looked at the, um, the online content for the top 100 um, engaging brands in the US and they broke down what made their content so engaging to the audience. And the first thing was, was it gave some incentive. Now, an incentive doesn't have to be a discount. And with my clients, I actually actively discourage them to discount. I will encourage them to price match if they can afford to, but I do not um, recommend discounting because you end up in a price war that no business actually wins out of. Um, value adding. So, like Dean is and Good We are providing masks to their customers. That is a value add that they're providing as a service. Um, my local butcher, as an incentive, has started selling rolls of toilet paper. So, there are a number of different ways that you can offer an incentive. Behind the scenes is actually a really great incentive so that we learn more about you. I'm going to talk about 
know, like, and trust and knowing about you and how that's going to help with sales for a little bit further on. Researchers found a call to action actually helped. Now, some of you might go, but this seems really obvious. Surely people know to click on the call button or um, send me a message if the message button is there. We don't. You know, we get distracted. And in these times where everything is a little bit uncertain, we actually like people to tell us what to do. Here in Australia, we don't like to be too pushy and too assertive, but there's nothing wrong with, you know, saying, you know what, call and here's our number or message us. When it comes to Facebook, you cannot tell people to like, comment or share your posts. Facebook will actually penalise you. So do not use those kinds of words in your posts, but certainly tell them to call and provide the number. Tell them to click on the link to, you know, access more information. So there's a lot of things that you can actually do with, with your content. The final thing that the researchers found was appealing to the sense of self. And this is where I'm going to dig right into the psychology and Rich was talking about emotions. So this is a, um, a system, a schema that I set up um, from working with my clients and from taking on the research and it's, the researchers that I was just speaking about identified um, the types of content themselves, the things that people want to see in the content. And they said people want to have their fears, their drivers and their goals addressed. And as a psychology graduate, I was like, well, drivers is a pretty broad thing. What else is in there? And um, it was just, Justin, Jason was talking about this right at the start with FEMA, FEMA and um, their research. And so the first thing, and most of you would know this, the first thing that you need to get past is a person's objectives. And a person's objectives is run by their fears and their needs. So what I didn't mention, or I did mention a little bit earlier, is that I do have solar and at the moment um, we're building a house in the Adelaide Hills and so I'm going to use this as an example as one of your customers um, just so that you know the system that I'm having put in place is 18 400 watt panels and we've got two three and a half kilowatt super capacitors uh, being installed as storage. So I'm not the decision maker, that's my husband's, he's the, the tech head and he's the one that really enjoys all of this kind of stuff. I just say, yes, dear, just so long as it works. Um, so for me, my fear was, is this going to work? You know, am I wasting my money? Is my roof actually, and my house actually oriented the right way to maximise the, the solar collection. These, these are my fears that I need addressed. And these are things that you can talk to in your social media posts, in your Facebook posts. And like Rich was saying, you, you know, it's a whole digital ecosystem that your business has. So even with my electrician clients, we're talking about this in our emails that are going out to their lists. The needs. So live in the Eight Hills, it gets cold up there in winter. In fact, it gets below zero. I need this because it's an all electric house. I actually need the system to be um, big enough to power my all electric house in winter in the Adelaide Hills. This is what I need. Um, my beliefs, I believe that solar works. I had solar on a, a previous home. So 
I believe in solar. It, it's just one of those things. Do I believe that I'm going to make my money back on my investment? No. I, I know that I don't have to, to do that. That's my personal beliefs. But some people may have that belief. And to set the right expectations, you'll need to talk to them about that belief. My values. Now, before I go into this, some of you might be wondering what's the difference between a belief and a value. A belief is a thought that's held as a truth and it's based on our lived experiences. So the thing that I say is that I believe in psychology. Um, but if I asked any other psychology graduate what their understanding of psychology was, we would have two different belief structures because you buy into a school of, of psychology and what your thought structures and um, belief structures are going around. Same as Christians. If you ask two Christians what their definition of Christianity was, you would get two different answers. Values, however, are universal. They're not based on our lived experiences. So it does not matter what we believe, say, trust, honour, integrity, um, quality, these are all values. If I was to ask anyone of any background, any ethnicity, we would all have a very common understanding of those values. So for me, when it comes to solar, um, actually when it comes to me and dealing with any business, I value local, I value small business. Um, I value keeping money in my local economy. So for me, they're my personal values. And if that is the value structure for your audience, then you need to address that. You need to show them that you understand that. If it's the value structure for your business as well, then it makes it even easier. And I'll discuss why in a minute. And finally, it's goals. So my goal is to be able to produce enough electricity to get us to, you know, power my house in wintertime in the Adelaide Hills. Um, no main feat, but, you know, hopefully you get some indication of the size of the, the system I'm installing. Um, and we've, you know, been told that we'll meet that goals. So what are the goals? What are the fears of your audience? and show them that you understand them and you hear them. What are their needs? What are their beliefs? What are their values? What are their goals? You know, and use that information in those posts that you're popping out on Facebook. The reason why is because this is what makes a person. The demographics, so their age, their gender, whether or not they're married, whether or not they have children, is what they are. It's not who they are as a person and it doesn't necessarily drive the decision that they make. Not nearly as much as these things do. So I mentioned at the start about no liking trusting this some of you who've been around or listened to marketing um, podcasts and read marketing books may have heard the saying that people buy from people that they know, like and trust. The actual quote is all things being equal. People do business with people and refer business to people they know, like and trust. So once again, it is about people, your business and your business success is about understanding the people and what drives them. Facebook is about people. And so if you can understand them and talk to them, like I said at the start, Facebook was about bringing people together and friends together. When we develop a friendship with someone, we look for common interests and common experiences. And so when you can talk to someone about those things, like we understand you're fearful about being able to 
I don't know, um, that the the solar system won't do its job. We, we, we hear you and we understand you and this is how we meet it. You show the other person that you've heard them, you understand them. Um, if you share values, you show them that they're part of a group and part of something bigger. And at this point in time, more than anything, we need to feel like we belong to something. We need to feel like we're not alone in this. So you're, it's about developing that relationship and that friendship with the people who are in your sphere of influence. And don't forget that you're not just influencing the person who is reading your Facebook post, but they will pass that knowledge on to their friends. And like I said earlier, they're going to be the biggest um, and best sales team that you've never known you've had. And so if you bring them in closer, you're going to benefit. So I've been doing this for years. I've been talking about the psychology of social media for about five years now and consistently talking about it. And it's now that people know that they need this edge when it comes to their social media, that they're coming to me and going, Cara, I know this is what you talk about. And so I need to know more. And that's the reassurance that I want to give to you. Whilst you may feel like, but it's doing nothing, I'm going nowhere. You'll be surprised just because you don't get the feedback doesn't mean that you're not making a difference to your community. You really, truly are. So to summarise, what I want you to do is to post at the right time. Post in the evening or first thing in the morning. Post what your people and therefore Facebook want to see. I know Facebook's run by an algorithm and that it will bring up posts that in your newsfeed as a normal consumer that you may not, that you may have missed. But that still depends on other people actually seeing the content and clicking on it. Um, and don't say no for your audience. You know, it's by not posting, you're denying them the ability and the ease to say yes to you. So keep posting, especially at this point in time, because you do not know when that silence will actually turn into a yes down the track. So just so you know, I can make, keep my marketing really simple. I am Cara Lambertcom all over social media. This is my website. I've got a number of different resources that talk about the psychology of social media on my website, including a couple of courses. And if you have any questions, please email me at cara at caralambert.com. So that is me and I've got to try and get me back on the screen so I can see myself. <sighs> Thanks, Cara. That was lovely. Um, yeah, look, I really, I think it's one of those things that um, the more we understand our customers and more we understand their habits, their behaviours and how they act and engage with their social media, the more we can connect with their with them. And so I think you're right. Um, I think social media is it's a numbers game. You want to talk to lots of people, but you want to wrap it in a relationship. And so when you do that, when you have that relationship with people, when you have that connection, that you're you're consistent with your messaging, you're consistent with how you post and you post at the right time. When people when the eyeballs are there is when the, the post should go out. Um, that 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 is the thing that really um, builds a consistent voice and a consistent language and a consistent message um, day in, day out. And that's the thing that people connect. Um, we want mind space. We want people to remember us. And by being there on a regular basis, getting a message out, being engaging and interesting, that that's how our customers connect with us. 
It's when we do things sporadically, that's when people forget about you, forget about what you're doing. So I agree. It also subtly shows your audience that you're reliable. And I've got to be honest, the best thing for me that a service provider can show me is that they're reliable, to be honest. Mm. If I'm about to throw, you know, a good, I'm trying to think, <laughs> twenty to $30,000 <clears> on a system at a, at a solar installer, I want to know that they're reliable. Agreed. So, and I think those those patterns and those habits um, demonstrate that. So, thank you, Cara. Um, I'm going to bring on our last speaker, um, who is Rick Risham from One Stop Warehouse. Rick is the National Sales Manager, and he's going to close out the event. I'll do a quick conclusion, and then we'll go to beer o'clock. I apologise that we've run a little bit over time, um, but thank you for your patience, and thank you for being a part of it. Um, Rick. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Let me see. Okay. okay. Thank you, Tim. Hi, everyone. Uh, you can hear me just fine. Perfectly. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Uh, some of you already uh, know me by, uh, by Rick. Um, so from that, I will, I'll start. First of all, thank you. Thank you for joining our survival and stimulus webinar series. Um, hope this adds value to your business. I won't take actually much of uh, the screen time as we have a um, bit of a surprise from Dean Goodwee after this one. Okay. A quick uh, company, company overview. As some of you already know, with your continued support and well, continued support towards the warehouse, we actually managed to do year and year growth, becoming the largest distributor in the country. And we thank all our customers and suppliers for that. Um, our warehouses, we operate in all major states nationwide and some of, some of the R&D staff in um, overseas as well. For, for us, businesses as usual, all our branches and warehouses are now open to care of your needs. And of course, our stock level is very good. And some, some, some more stock, including new ranges, are expected to hit our warehouses in due weeks. As you can see on screen, we, we carry quite extensive range of products to care for our different, uh, to cater for different tiers of the market. We are also now actually running weekly and monthly promotions to help you to win more jobs. So please get in touch with your account managers and myself to get more info. As you know, in these uncertain times, it is very imperative to have a safe working environment for our staff and our customers. So we are being very responsible, I guess, um, just to remind you that we take all precautionary measures outlined by all health authorities, and our utmost priority is to the safety of our customers as well as our staff. And also we do help our community, our actually solar community, uh, by doing our part in making sure our industry continues to operate. We are adding more staff, securing more stock with our suppliers while providing pricing advantage to our customers. As you know, some of the prices in the market actually has already gone up, but we assure you will keep it steady and continue to support it to add value to your customers. We are also actually running uh, and, and planning to do more online projects to reassure and provide insights to your customers to reinvent the wheel and keep, um, keep selling. Okay, so um, that's, a, that's a brief one. I don't have much actually, I'm not part of the speaker. So uh, that's all from my side. Tim, over to you. Thank you, everyone. Tim, you're on mute. Thank you, Didi. Um, thanks, Rick. Um, it's great to know that One Stop Warehouse is doing all that they can to make um, things safe in that transaction between um, customer and delivery. So I really appreciate that. Um, 
thank you everybody thank you for your patience thank you for staying so long into this presentation um i'd like to thank our five speakers um carol lambert um jason benning from fema rich latimer from rich latimer digital uh, rich training digital um dean williamson from goodwe and sid shaheed from discover energy i'd like to thank um our partner sponsors um, for the whole event, UA, FEMA, SunGrow, Longy and Solar. And just thank you everybody for just being a part of this community, being a part of um, the One Stop Warehouse family. So we'll be having another um, presentation next week. Um, and the week after on a Friday. So um, make sure you sign up for that. We hope that you're getting some value out of this. We hope that your businesses um, are being sustained by these connections. So thank you for that. Um, and we will call that a day. Um, I'm going to close off with this slide just for a moment. Um, and then Dee is going to stop recording.